Hello there folks, I'm Dan Brown from a sort of interest in life.com. You're joining me up in some lovely woods and today we're going to talk about the role of technology in a simple life. Right, let's show that Dan Brown monologues card and then get stuck in. If you take a look at where we are right now, then this is the sort of place that when I think traditionally and think back to my teenage years before technology was as prevalent as it is today, this is exactly how I envision trying to live a simple life. Being up somewhere amazing like this, just out in totally natural surroundings. As you can see, it doesn't get much more sort of woodland than this. You've got your classic uh, sort of woodland track here. You've got trees that have come down in high winds or snowfall. And goodness knows what creatures rustling around all over the place. I've been lucky enough to be up here in the past and see a woodpecker or two up in the treetops and I've been up here in such harsh snow and ice conditions that my trousers froze absolutely solid around my ankles. That's absolutely true I'm afraid to say and these are the sorts of places that you think well what can technology possibly play a role in this sort of environment and really it doesn't play anything. That's why this is so sort of traditional, old world, almost Lord of the Rings style. Yeah, you go to work and then you just get to enjoy nature and tell stories and make music on your lute and all that sort of ridiculous stereotypical stuff. And of course, this is the sort of thing that I've based my entire life around doing more of. As some of you will know, I live on a small narrowboat and the whole basis of that is I can moor my boat up in amazing rural places and have different areas like this to visit at different times of the year. And equally, by living on such a small narrowboat and trying to live such a simple basic life, I can keep the costs of my life down a huge amount to the point where I can comfortably live off only working two days a week, which is exactly what I've been doing for just over two years now. And being able to actually get out into these places is what it's all about. So in one sense, I've managed to create that simple life for me. I can go to work, do me work, and then come home and sit by a nice wood burning fire or whatever other stereotypical images you like to um, uh, build up for narrowboat life. But this is the heart of it. And at one point, I was intending to buy my boat and disappear off on an adventure and nobody would really ever hear from me again. Whereas, as it happened, because I basically knew nothing at all about boats and boat life, when I did buy my boat, I luckily decided not to go off on a big adventure because that would have been totally disastrous at that point in my life. And instead, I uh, just started posting random videos on YouTube and carrying on living and doing the things that I'd always done online but only obviously being surrounded by water and boats gave me a whole new avenue to explore with my filming which has bizarrely led to the situation that you find me in now where the YouTube channel has had over a million views in just over 10 months 3 million minutes watched over that same time period and there's people all around the world who are tuning into these videos and it's just unbelievable. It's beyond anything I ever would have imagined. And of course, those two things, being on YouTube and getting millions of views and all that sort of stuff, is completely the polar opposite of the intended simple life that I was building for myself originally and that I have still, despite the incredible surge in support and following online, I'm still living this simple life. And that really is what technology is allowed to be created in terms of the modern day lifestyle of I can still live this incredibly simple lifestyle because the technology available to us is so small and so good and quick at what it does now that I can be here filming on an iPod Touch which is about 8mm thick and it only weighs 88 grams so as you can probably imagine that, get ready for the big jump Oh, wish me luck. Oh, <laughs> just about managed to make it. But having something nice and simple like an iPod Touch, which I can put in my pocket and not even know that it's really there because it is so small and so lightweight, it's enabled me to be able to talk, uh, do the exact same things that I always do, walking up these hills like I've been doing for the last decade or so, coming into amazing little places like this, and all of the things that I love doing. But also, I'm now talking to people where I'm not sure where you'll be tuning in from around the world to watch this. 
but even just the idea of being able to talk to people from a place like this and show you exactly what I'm talking about when I talk about these amazing old world places. I mean, does this little collapsed bridge not look like something straight from Lord of the Rings to you? Um, but the fact that I'm able to literally point a camera around that weighs less than a sandwich, say, um, and actually show you exactly what I'm talking about. And then the potential of thousands of people maybe tuning into this video over the years is just incredible. And because this is all going to be done literally in real time as I'm walking around here, I'm recording this and speaking and just enjoying the surroundings. You can see it's not a particularly grand day out there. But what technology has allowed me to do is basically keep living the simplest life that I possibly can but fetch people from all over the world along for the ride as well. And if people want to tune into these videos, then that's absolutely fantastic. But equally, if people decided that they never wanted to see me again, then that's equally an option that you've got. And on the viewer side of things, obviously, once upon a time, somewhere like this, hidden away in the backwaters of Shropshire in England, were just impossible to access or ever imagine. But now you're right here at the back of Western Rin, just on the Welsh border, and you're seeing exactly what there is right here. And that's something that I just think is incredible. And, and I really wanted to put this video together just to talk and say that there's this idea that modern day technology is destroying society and ruining the old things in life, which to a certain extent is true. And there are a lot of examples where technology does not improve things at all. But the reason that it's got this general sort of bad air in certain, uh, certain areas of certain communities is because people seem to be determined to let technology destroy modern day life by letting it into things that you really shouldn't let it into for a start. But equally, there's something like this where my phone can be dinging and buzzing and all that sort of stuff. And there could be Twitter and Facebook and Tumblr and goodness knows what going on on YouTube but I'm happy with that that doesn't it doesn't mean that this is any less beautiful and I've made a video in the past saying basically the exact opposite of technology's not the greatest thing in the world and a simple life is the best and all that sort of stuff and I realized how upside down I had everything when I was talking back then because I was still in that area of my life where I was trying to sort of break the bonds that technology had put on me with me being obsessed with checking up on Facebook and obsessed with checking this and oh I wonder if anything's happened with this and oh what's the latest technology news has something exciting happened and what's Apple going to announce next and all of these things used to be major elements of my life and major things that I looked forward to and made up a big part of my life and I'm certainly not saying that that's wrong but to somebody like me who it literally made up my entire life. That was obviously too much and that's where technology had given me the option to allow it to totally take over my life and checking up for the latest news on this or the latest development on that and oh has somebody looked at this picture, has somebody liked that photo and all of these different things that are ultimately meaningless were becoming the important things in my life. Whereas now I've sort of settled into the simple life again and I've really got out of how it was when maybe I was in my sort of early 20s. And being able to just once again be around somewhere like this. And come here a couple of times a year. Probably come up here a couple more times um, over the next sort of couple of months. I'm going to try and make this a more frequent uh, trip and walk while I'm moored up in the area for the winter. And this is basically the heart of everything. And if you can build technology or build a simple life around the areas of life that you want to actually enjoy, because I'm certainly not saying that all that anybody should ever be allowed to do is walk around the woods like this. I mean, where would I go if that happened for a start? But the fact that I can be walking up here for, well, it's probably going to be about an hour and a half to two hours that I've been out walking now. And I've only met and spoken to one single person in all of that time. And to me, that's absolutely lovely how it is. I wish more people would come out and enjoy it. But equally, I'm more than happy to spread the joy and try and communicate how much I love places like this through simply using technology. 
and again as people who are unable to get out and enjoy these things and they're the people who seem to be most sort of in tune with my life view in many ways that they can see and understand that there's this amazing world all around us I mean just look at where we are once again and when you've got something as incredible as this to just go and wander around you've got to really make the most of it while you can and at the very least I want to try and make a record of these places especially as more of them are disappearing and again having something that's 88 grams and 8 millimeters thick being able to take that out of my backpack barely knowing that it was there to begin with and document all of these things I'm more than happy to say that this is a part of my simple lifestyle that the modern day has allowed me to create. So as this has turned into an extremely long rambling video, in every sense of the word rambling I suppose, of me wittering on and also quite literally rambling with boots on our feet, I'm going to say thank you very much for watching. I hope that this hasn't bored you too much. hope that it's, I don't know, maybe been slightly interesting to wonder and think about. And as the weather is not being my friend at all today, I'm going to say thank you very much for watching. Check out my other videos for loads more bits and pieces like this. Out walking, out biking in amazing rural areas, and of course, living on board a narrowboat. Until the next time, have an absolutely fantastic day. Feel free to like the Facebook page or even add me personally on Facebook and Twitter for general photos and, well, just generally pictures from places like this and obviously out on the canal. Feel free to check out my books for the Kindle. The Narrowboat Lad is the first one. All the links in the description for Facebook and Kindle and everything else. Until next time, have a fantastic day and farewell.